Buenas noches, guys. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? ¿Qué tal esos ánimos para el día de hoy? Mejor que ayer, ¿cómo se sienten? ¿Qué tal? Cuéntenme. Happy to see you again, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Sofía. How are you? I'm fine. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Julio. You seem really fresh, Sofia. Did you take a shower or something? Because you look really fresh. I mean, like you just came out of the pool or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's really hot here. Yeah, right. But today, at least, I don't know about you guys, but here in my area, it hasn't been so hot like the other days. I don't know how, what the weather is like where you guys live. But here, it's it's not been that hot today. It's been a little bit better, honestly. What can you tell me, guys? How is the weather today for you? Vamos a ver qué dice Julio. ¿Cómo ha estado el clima para usted ahora, Julio? How is the weather today, Julio? Is it hot? Is it cold? What can you tell me about it? Vamos a ver, ¿qué pueden decir los demás? Francisco, Wendy, Luis. Nothing. Ok, no problem. Thank you, guys. Bueno, vamos a esperar un par de... Vamos a empezar... Perdón. It's very hot the weather. It's really hot. Yeah, ok. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you. Bueno, guys, eh, vamos a esperar un par de segundos más a que vengan los demás, ¿verdad? Solamente vemos siete. Deberíamos hacer catorce, así que vamos a esperar un poquito más. Ya casi termina. Ya casi eh, vamos a empezar. Vamos a ver por acá. Déjenme revisar mientras tanto. So we have a couple of things that we are going to do today. Just bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Zero conditional. Eh, vamos a ver. So what do we have here? Vamos a ver. Vamos a intentar hacer algo para el día de hoy. Vamos a ver. No, este no. Okay. Bueno, creo que ya estamos la mayoría, ¿verdad? All right, guys, thank you so much for coming. I am really happy to see you again. So, hope you guys are doing fine. I hope you guys had a wonderful day at work or at school. I don't know. I, I can imagine that most of you are working. So, hope that you guys had a good day. So for today, guys, we're going to continue with our topic for today. So last, uh, well, yesterday we talked about the Unreal conditional. Vamos a ver por acá. So Jorge says, um, okay. Jorge says that he's not feeling well. Bueno, parece que Jorge no va a poder estar en la clase. Okay, no problem. So, like I was saying, guys, uh, so yesterday we discussed like this uh, 
on real conditional like we were saying that we had like two parts to the sentence like the first one we have the if part of the sentence and then we have like the main part of the sentence so for example we we had the the conversation between two people about uh what would you do uh if you found uh seven hundred fifty thousand dollars what would you do and then we had like some examples you guys participated you guys gave me a lot of good examples yesterday so for today we're going to continue we're going to look something different a uh, new topic so we can learn something new okay bueno vamos a el día de hoy vamos a seguir con los temas vamos a practicar eh, vamos a tener ahí un rato para que ustedes puedan conversar entre ustedes como siempre les digo es para que ustedes eh, pueden, puedan practicar no hay como una limitación verdad es que solamente de algo en específico ustedes pueden hablar siempre y cuando sea de nuestro en este caso relacionado con el aprendizaje ustedes pueden hablar de cualquier cosa de, de, de inglés ok así que vamos a practicar y primero antes vamos a ver eh, este nuevo tema ok so, vamos a ver por acá Just a second, guys. Bueno. Vamos a empezar, entonces. Vamos a ver por acá. Bueno, bueno, les puede compartir la pantalla por acá. Vamos a ver. Bueno, entonces ayer vimos esto. Very easy, very easy for you guys. And then we have this uh, uh, new topic for today. So by the end of this class, uh, it says participants will learn and understand the use of Unreal conditional sentences with if clauses okay so we had yesterday the unreal conditional and today we're going to use that with sentences with if clauses basically it's really similar to what we learned yesterday so we're going to go over it really fast and then we're going to practice a little bit okay de hoy vamos a practicar un rato, guys. Así que vamos a ver. Solamente denme un segundo. So I don't know if you guys have any questions at this point. Uh, how are you guys doing with the platform, with the online uh, resources that we have? Did you already finish? ¿Ya completaron todo, guys? ¿Cómo van con eso? Supongo que sí, ¿verdad? Creo que les, les pidieron que terminaran con esa parte... Creo que ayer, ¿no? ¿Ya terminaron? Yes, teacher. I finished the platform. All right. Very good. Thank you, Francisco. Very good. Bueno, entonces vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Bueno, entonces estamos por acá. Vamos a, vamos a escuchar el video. Vamos a discutir esta parte y luego, pues, vamos a practicar, ¿ok? Questions. What would you do if you... Hi, are you ready to describe imaginary situations? You will learn to do so after the audio program and our explanation. Unreal conditional sentences with if clauses. Unreal conditional sentences describe imaginary situations with simple past forms and consequences in the present. What would you do if you found $750,000? If I found $750,000, I would go straight to the mall. 
If I found $750,000, I'd go straight to the mall. If I found $750,000, I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. If I found $750,000, I might go to the police. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. All right, guys. Uh, so we have uh, so we have here uh, sentences with the if clause. Okay, what what is the what does that mean? So basically, we have two parts to the sentence. We have the if clause, and then we have the main uh, clause, which is this, like the second part of the sentence. So basically, clauses are like a synonym to a sentence, okay? So that's what it means. So we have sentence number one, and then we have sentence number two. So we have this example. It says, what would you do if you found $750,000? If I found $750,000, I would go straight to the mall. So we have different options, okay? We have different possibilities here. We have uh, different model verbs that we can use, like would, we have could, might, and wouldn't, right? Entonces, eh, ¿qué decíamos nosotros? ¿En qué caso nosotros utilizábamos, por ejemplo, el verbo modal could? Vamos a ver si se acuerdan. ¿Cuándo lo utilizamos nosotros? ¿Cuándo utilizamos could? ¿Cuándo utilizamos might? ¿En would? ¿Cuándo utilizamos nosotros eso? Vamos a ver, ¿quién se acuerda? Estuvimos viendo, ¿verdad? ¿Se acuerdan cuando vimos los modales? Dijimos, vaya, por ejemplo, teníamos permiso, teníamos posibilidad, teníamos ese tipo de cosas, ¿verdad? When there is a, a possibility, teacher. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, that is correct. So, for example, we have might. We said that we used might so we can talk about, like, possibility. Like, 50%, okay? I might do this or I, I may not do this. So basically that's what it is. And then what about could? When do we use could? For what? ¿Para qué utilizamos could? ¿Qué es lo que representa ese verbo modal? ¿Para qué es? A ver, ¿quién se acuerda? Dijimos que va, vamos a utilizar could, por ejemplo, cuando hablamos acerca de la como la capacidad de hacer algo, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, yo pudiera hacer esto, ¿ok? Si tuviera esa cantidad de dinero, yo pudiera hacer esto. O sea que tendría la capacidad de hacerlo, ¿ok? Entonces, para eso se utiliza could, es igual que can, pero en este caso, como estamos hablando de algo imaginario, por eso utilizamos estos verbos modales, por eso no decimos can, por ejemplo, porque estamos hablando de una situación imaginaria, ¿ok? No podemos decir, if I found $750,000, I can buy lots of nice clothes, because that's not something real. That's the reason that it doesn't make sense, and, and that's the reason why we say could instead of can. Okay, no sé si está claro aquí, guys. Como es una situación irreal, por eso utilizamos estos verbos modales, no otros. ¿Qué piensan ustedes acerca de should, por ejemplo, en estas oraciones? Like should, or uh, como les dije, can, or must, no sería prácticamente, no tendría como coherencia, ¿verdad? Porque estamos hablando de algo irreal. Y dijimos que must, por ejemplo, era para cuando nosotros estábamos casi que seguros de algo, como que era 100%. Pero en este caso es imaginario, ¿verdad? So, if I found $750,000, I could or I might go to the police. I mean, we don't know because it's not real. That's the reason why. 
Vale, entonces tenemos esas opciones. Tenemos la primera parte de la, de la oración, la primera oración, que es la cláusula número uno, que es la cláusula de uh, the if clause that we're talking about here. So we have if I found, so if, then the subject, and then the verb in the past participle. Okay, if I found $750,000, then we have the second clause, sentence number two. We have the subject, then we have the model verb, And then after that, we have the main verb. And that is going to be in the base form, right? Because we have the model verb. Because of that, this main verb remains like in the base form, right? So we have, I would go straight to the mall. Or I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. Okay? So any questions, guys? Alguna pregunta? Está todo claro? No preguntas. Ok, vamos a continuar entonces. Ya vamos a practicar un poco. Vaya, vale, quiero que hagamos algo. Antes de que sigamos. Bueno, vamos a, vamos a ver el video. Más. Después vamos a practicar. Ok. I wouldn't return it so fast. This is what Unreal Conditional is about. Unreal Conditional describes imaginary situations. Let's begin with the structure of it. An unreal conditional is made out of two clauses, the if clause and the main clause. Let's work first on the if clause. This one is formed with if plus a past simple verb. Let's move on to the main clause. In this part, we may use would, could, or might plus verb in simple present. We want you to pay attention entonces acá tenemos, guys, la estructura gramática, ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos la cláusula if. Entonces tenemos if, eh, bueno, luego sería el sujeto, luego el verbo en pasado, como les estaba diciendo. Pasado simple. ¿Okay? Luego tenemos la cláusula principal, que es la otra oración. En esa vamos a tener nosotros estos verbos. ¿okay? Like, would, could, and might. Entonces tenemos el verbo que va a estar en la forma base, como les estaba diciendo. Vaya, acá abajo dice otra cosa. Dice, it is important to take into account that in conditionals, it is usual to see he, she, and it with were instead of was, okay? So like I told you guys the last time, uh, when we have this structure, when we have the if clause, most of the times, I mean, almost always, I think, you're going to use were for he, she, and it. Like, for example, you can say, If she were um, rich, uh, she could buy a lot of things for her, for example. Vamos a ponerlo por acá, lo vamos a anotar para que veamos como el ejemplo, ¿verdad? Tenemos la cláusula if primero, que sería if, luego el sujeto, she were rich, uh, she could buy a house for her parents, por ejemplo, for her parents. Y sería lo mismo si tuviéramos, por ejemplo, he, ¿verdad? Sería, if he were rich, he could buy a house for his parents, in this case, ¿ok? Ahí está, ¿verdad? Entonces, básicamente acá, a pesar de que estamos hablando de él, no vamos a utilizar was, sino que were. Por esta razón, porque tenemos la cláusula del tipo if, de ese condicional. Aquí tenemos otro ejemplo. Dice, if he were friendly, we would be good friends. Ok, entonces, ¿alguna duda, guys, hasta ahora? Creo que está bastante sencillo, ¿verdad? Esto ya como que lo hemos visto quizás antes, incluso. Vale, si no tenemos ninguna pregunta, entonces vamos a continuar. Let's continue. Let's move on to the main clause. In this part, we may use would, could, or might, plus verb in simple present. We want you to pay attention to the following. Clauses may change position. If clause may be first or vice versa, but you need to watch your punctuation. The use of comma is mandatory when the if clause is at the beginning. Read the following example and notice the use of a comma. 
but when the if clause is at the end of the sentence, we do not use a comma. Finally, we have some examples for you. Ok, guys. No, luego tenemos esta parte acá. Dice acerca de la puntuación. Más gramática, ¿verdad? Es importante también. Entonces, eh, tenemos que la cláusula if puede ir tanto al principio como puede ir también al final. Ok. Eso es algo que a veces tenemos dudas. ¿Dónde podemos ponerla? Si es al principio o solamente al final y así. Pero en este caso se puede de ambas formas. ¿Qué sucede si va al principio? Nos dice acá. Uh, the, uh, the use of a comma is mandatory when the if clause is at the beginning. Okay, so for example, we have if I were in France, comma, I would visit the Eiffel Tower. Okay, so since the if clause is at the beginning, then we need to use the comma. In this case, right? So if I were in France, I would visit the Eiffel Tower. We have the comma right there in the middle. But then uh, what happens if the clause is at the end? We have, when the if clause is at the end of the sentence, we do not use a comma. So, for example, we have the same, basically the same sentence here. And it says, I would visit the Eiffel Tower if I were in France. Okay, so, basically, uh, you know, it changes. Like, in this case, we don't have the comma. Even though we have the same sentence, but it's just a different order. Right, entonces, acá, guys. Si se fijan, si la cláusula if va al final, ya no le ponemos la coma. Si va al principio, sí. Ok, así que recuerden eso. Tenemos las dos oraciones. Cuando va al principio, ponemos la coma. Cuando va al final, no hay coma. Ok. Let's continue. Read the following example and notice the use of a coma. But when the if clause is at the end of the sentence, we do not use a coma. Finally, we have some examples for you. If she had a lot of money, she could buy a new apartment. They would be happy if they won the lottery. If he were president, he might reduce taxes. Bueno, entonces tenemos más ejemplos acá, ¿verdad? Siempre acerca de la posición de la cláusula if. Tenemos el primer ejemplo, dice, if she had a lot of money, coma, she could buy a new apartment. Okay? And then we have the if clause at the end, and it says they would be happy if they won the lottery. There is no comma there. And then we have if he were president, comma, he might reduce taxes. So, as you can see, we have the comma in the middle because we have the if clause at the beginning. So that's the reason why. Okay. Una pregunta, guys, hasta ahora. Ninguna pregunta, verdad? Bueno, vamos a ver, entonces, me gustaría que, bueno, ahora que ya vimos esta parte, vamos a retroceder un poco. This is what real... bueno, entonces tenemos esta, oras esta oración, tenemos acá, ¿verdad? Uh, if I found $750,000, I would uh, go straight to the mall. Entonces me gustaría que hagamos lo siguiente, eh, para que practiquen ustedes, que puedan participar. Vamos a decir la misma oración, pero le vamos a cambiar esto de acá, ¿verdad? Pero quiero que ustedes me digan cada uno de ellos. Por ejemplo, if I found uh, $750,000, I would go uh, to the police station. Uh, I could, uh, I could, uh, I don't know, I could uh, return it uh, to the owner, or I might uh, go to, to another country, or I wouldn't uh, keep it. To myself, por ejemplo. Entonces quiero que ustedes, para cada uno de estos, me digan algo diferente, ¿ok? Vamos a intentar hacer eso. So, if I found uh, $750,000, I would, uh, I would just uh, leave the country, por ejemplo. I don't know. I would leave the country or I would buy a mansion. Uh, I would buy my own company, I don't know, things like that, or, vamos a ver, eh, por favor, anótenlo si quieren los ejemplos, eh, vamos a trabajar en esta parte ahorita, intentemos anotarlos quizás, y ya cuando los tengan, por favor, me avisan.
All right, guys, so you let me know once you finish, okay? If you have questions, guys, you can let me know, okay? You can send a message. You don't want to... And if you are not, not able to say something, you can send a message. That would be fine. Vamos a ver, ¿cómo vamos, guys? ¿Qué, ¿Cómo van hasta ahora? ¿Ya tienen algunos ejemplos, tal vez? Si no, pues les voy a preguntar, quizás. Ahí está, Julio, ok, muy bien, Julio. Thank you. En Carla también, vamos a ver. Ok, I, I have uh, three. All right, very good. If, if I found uh, $75,000, I will go to Europe. Uh, $75,000? Uh-huh. $75,000. Uh-huh. $75,000. Uh, this is not $75,000. Oh, it's... Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't... It... it um... Mm. Is seven fifty grams. I don't know how, <laughs> how to say that. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I was trying to get. Okay, so basically it is uh seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Okay. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, let's just start over one more time, please. Uh, if if I found if I found uh seven seven mm -hmm. hundred fifty thousand dollars, I I will go to Europe. Okay, very good. Okay, bien. With my family, I will go to Europe with my family. Okay. Uh, if if I found uh seventy uh. Seven thousand fifty uh, uh, seven uh -huh. hundred mm -hmm. thousand dollars. There you go. Uh, I I I will go straight to the Fiscalía General de la República. <laughs> okay, so uh, what would you can say? Like I could go. I could. Okay, let's try something different. I could go. Okay. Uh, straight. To, uh, yeah, to, to the fiscal. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. is, is that it? No. Uh, I have. I have. Uh, two more. One more. Mm -hmm. I don't. I have two. Uh, if I. If I found seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, I will donate to the to the church. 
I would donate to the church, okay? To the church, right? And, and if I have, and, and if I found uh, $750,000, uh, I could pay all my loans. I could pay all my loans, okay? I could pay all my loans. Very good. Very, very good. Ahí está. Okay, muy bien, muy bien, Julio. Solo eso sería. Is that it? Yeah, is that it? It's, That's it's it. all I have. That's it. Very good. Thank you. Bueno, por ahí teníamos también a Carla, ¿verdad? Carla estaba por ahí. Yes, teacher. If I found $750,000, I could study in another country. I could study in another country. Okay, very good. That's very good. Thank you. The second, if I found $750,000, I will pay for medical attention for my family. Pay for medical attention for my family. Okay, very good. The third one, if I found $750,000, I might visit a Sterling Castle with my friends. Sterling Castle with my friends. It's Sterling. Sterling, okay. Let me... How do you spell that, Carla? S T I R L I N G. Okay, very good. Thank you. Castle with my friends. Yes. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Carla. Que okay, muy bien. Perfecto. Entonces ahí tenemos eh, los ejemplos de Carla. Eh, pudiera estudiar en otro país. Muy bien. Creo que muchos queremos eso, ¿verdad? Pero pudiera ser una buena opción. Ir a estudiar a otro país. Y quedarnos ahí. <laughs> ¿Verdad? <laughs> Then, uh, I will pay for medical attention for my family. That's very good. That's very good too. Because we have uh, probably the The public system doesn't work so fine sometimes. So maybe private uh, medical uh, assistance, it may be better sometimes, right? So then we have, I might uh, go. I think I, I'm missing something here. Uh, visit. To, excuse visit. me? Visit. visit. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So sorry about that. Okay, there we go. I might visit Sterling Castle with my friends. My friends, okay. También me hizo falta la S. Ahí estamos. Ahora sí, perfecto. Vamos a ver, no sé si alguien más quiere participar. Si no, pues vamos a continuar. Como les dije, quería que ustedes eh, practicaran. Entonces, quizás vamos a hacer eso para que no tengan tan poquito tiempo. Bueno, tenemos ahí a Francisco. Vamos a ver qué dice Francisco. Y Julio, otra vez. Ok. Ok. Uh, do you want to say something, Julio, or? No, no. Oh, okay. No, okay. Sorry. I see. I didn't... No, it's okay. <laughs> you didn't lower your hand. That's fine. No problem. Okay, well, vamos a ver Francisco, entonces. Thank you, teacher. <clears throat> My examples are, um, if I found uh, 7,500, Dollars. Yeah, seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, seven hundred fifty thousand. Sorry, sorry. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Right. I would travel all around the world. Mm -hmm. Travel. Uh, I could buy a a a latest model car. I could buy the latest motor car. Mother car, right? Mm -hmm. And I might go at home and surprise my family. <laughs> Michael, very good. Okay. And surprise my family. Okay, very good. And I wouldn't go through crowded places. <laughs> I wouldn't go to crowded places. Okay, very good. Muy bien, está bien. 
muy inteligente, la verdad, la respuesta de Francisco, ¿verdad? No iría a lugares muy eh, llenos de personas. Concurridos. <ríe> concurridos, yeah. exactamente, concurridos. <ríe> that's good, yes. I mean, if you found that much money, dangerous. you don't want... Yeah, that's too dangerous. You may uh, get into somebody that uh, will try to take that money away from you. So that's not good. So that's very good. Thank you, Francisco. I appreciate that. Bueno, ahí están los ejemplos de Francisco. Muy bien. Muy bien. Excelente. Tenemos a Ana también. Ana, vamos a ver. Hi. Um, if I found a 70, 70, 50, 000. Uh -huh. 750,000. Uh, 750,000. Okay. Sorry, teacher. Repeat. No, it's okay. It's okay. 70, no, uh, please. Uh, um, 70, so, 700, 750, 50. okay. Mm -hmm. um, I could, uh, I take vacation in my in Miami with my family. I would pay a vacation. Wait, perdón. I, I take, take. Oh, I would. I will take. Like this? I, I, um, no, take. Oh, take, I would take, take. I see. I see. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. I will take vacation in Miami vacation. with my family. In Miami with my family. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I, let's say it one more time, Anna, before you continue, before you go any further. So 750,000. Okay. So you need to say. Uh, oh, again. One more time. Okay. If I found 700, Fifty thousand. I go. Mm -hmm. I go buy a lot of clothes and shoes. A lot of clothes and shoes. And shoes. Okay, so I could buy a lot of clothes and shoes. A lot of clothes and Remember that you need to say like I could, like, like this. I could. Yes. Like this. I could mm -hmm. buy. Okay. I could. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Uh, I might mm -hmm. donate donate it charity. To charity. Okay. Very good. I might donate it to charity. Mm -hmm. Donate it to charity. Okay, there we go. Very good. Okay. And the last I will I will investment in properties and business. Would invest investment. In... Invest uh, in properties. In properties. Properties. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And business. And business. Okay. Very good. Thank, thank you so much, Ana. I appreciate that. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Bueno, ahí están los ejemplos de Ana. Muy bien. Muy bien, Ana. Ya ven, este... <ríe> Acá parece sencillo, ¿verdad? Uno lo ve y dice, ah, bueno, 750 mil en la cabeza. Pero ya cuando lo queremos decir, a veces nos trabamos un poquito. Es como que, ¿cómo lo digo? Y no crean, eso nos pasa a todos, ¿verdad? De repente vemos números así como que... Uh, y ya decimos, ¿cómo tengo que decir ese número? Ya es como que 316,356 and 4 cents. Entonces es como así, ¿verdad? Un poco más. Eh, y es importante, guys, es importante. A veces eh, uno se queda así como, ¿cómo lo digo? Entonces es bueno que lo practiquemos, ¿verdad? Así que muy bien, a todos los que hemos practicado, pues perfecto. Bueno, vamos a seguir entonces. Ya nos falta poquito. Como les digo, guys, estemos eh, contentos porque ya casi terminamos, ¿verdad? Solamente nos quedan dos clases más. Yo he sentido que el tiempo ha ido muy rápido. No sé ustedes, pero eh, de verdad que siento que acabamos de empezar y ya se va a terminar. O sea, súper rápido, la verdad. Así que vamos con el siguiente. Bueno, vamos a seguir con el video por acá. Vamos a ver qué dice. If she had a lot of money, she could buy a new apartment. They would be happy if they won the lottery. If he were president, he might reduce taxes. Now that you have learned about Unreal Conditional in class, I want you to take turns asking and answering questions. What would you do if you saw a burglar in your home? If you found a diamond ring? If your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust? Type your answers as well in our discussion box. Bye.
Entonces acá, guys, tenemos un Mary par de... Perdón, aquí tenemos un par de preguntas que es la que vamos a trabajar ahorita nosotros. Eh, ¿qué, ¿Qué es lo que entienden ustedes al final? ¿Qué es lo que dice? Vamos a ver, lo voy a reproducir una vez más y ustedes me dicen. Take turns asking and answering questions. What would you do if you saw a burglar in your home? If you found a diamond ring? If your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust? Tenemos tres preguntas ahí. ¿Cuáles son las preguntas? Vamos a ver. So, what questions do we have, guys? Let's see. Tenemos tres preguntas. ¿Cuáles son? Excuse me, teacher. Would you mind if <laughs> to, to play it again? Very good. Yes, of course. I can do that. Let me go back. There we go. Now that you have learned about Unreal Conditional in class, I want you to take turns asking and answering questions. What would you do if you saw a burglar in your home? If you found a diamond ring? If your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust? Type your answers as well in our discussion box. Vamos, ¿cuáles son las preguntas entonces? ¿Escucharon esta vez? Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. So what's, uh, what are the questions here? We have three questions, uh, right? Uh, what would you do if you saw a burglar mm -hmm. in so your what does, home? What does that mean? I really don't know. <laughs> burglar. That's what I understand. I It's a, a new word for me. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah. ¿Qué es eso entonces? <clears throat> Vamos a ver, tenemos que investigar, guys. <ríe> yeah, le... Ladrón. <ríe> ladrón, ahí está, correcto. Un ladrón, ¿verdad? There we go. So we have, what would you do if you saw a burglar in your house? You see a burglar in your house. You can also say thief, ¿verdad? O thief es otra forma de decirlo, más común. Thief. Or, or Robert, either. I don't know if 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 if, it, if we can use the. Mm, Robert, like this. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really sure to be honest with you. Okay. I'm not sure about that, but I know thief is like really common. Mm-hmm. And in this case, burglar. Ahí tenemos, ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos esa pregunta. Luego tenemos la otra. Perdón, guys. Vamos a ver por acá. <coughs> tengo que pasarme de pantalla porque tengo solo desorden aquí. Eh, no. Bueno, ahí está. Entonces, a burglar in your house. Y tenemos por último. Eh, vamos a ver. Bueno, tenemos eh, si encontrara un. Uh, If, diamond, no, ring. diamond ring. Diamond ring, ahí está, ¿verdad? Y la otra era un tema bien delicado, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál era el otro? If your friend marry with someone you don't trust. That is correct. That's the other one, right? Vamos a ver qué dice el video. Vamos a escucharlo. Take turns asking and answering questions. What would you do if you saw a burglar in your home, if you found a diamond ring, if your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust. Type your answers as well in our discussion. Okay, so if your friend wanted to marry someone you don't trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the question we have. Yeah. If your friend wanted to marry wanted someone, someone you don't trust that is correct thank, thank you, you julio uh -huh. you don't trust there we go that's the answer that's the the question i'm sorry uh wanted to marry someone you don't trust entonces esas son las tres preguntas que tenemos um 
nos quedan como 10 minutos, la verdad, guys. No sé si quieren, eh, practiquemos unos 10 minutitos y después eso, eso sería todo por el día de hoy. Practicamos unos 10 minutitos y después nos vamos, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a hacer eso. Vamos a responder esas preguntas que están ahí. ¿Estamos claros? Vamos a practicar aunque sea un ratito, porque ya se nos está haciendo tarde. Ahí está. Vamos a hacer en parejas. Uno pregunta y el otro contesta, ¿ok? If I see a... Bueno, en este caso sería... Recuerden, ¿verdad? Sería como en, en pasado. So, if I saw a burglar in my house, uh, I would call the police immediately. That would, that, that's what I would do. Maybe I, I would call 911. Or I would uh, try to defend myself and my family. Things like that, right? Bueno, entonces lo vamos a hacer rapidito, guys. Diez minutitos nada más. Ahí está. Yo lo voy a ir acomodando porque sé que a veces algunos no pueden, entonces lo voy a ir acomodando para que puedan practicar todos. Los que sí pueden. Vamos a ver por acá. Francisco. Francisco, do you have any problems with your uh, joining the, the room? I can see you here. What about Anna? Gonna have to. Uh, sorry, teacher. Uh, uh, please. Uh... Please, uh, me puede agregar de nuevo porque no, no, me tuve que levantar y no le di al, al botón. It's okay, no problem. Yes, I can Please. add you again. There, okay. there you go. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Pero aquí, ¿qué de Francisco? Hola, Francisco. Are you there? Hi, teacher. I have, I have problem with the. Uh, sign on, I, I guess. See. Okay, so you have uh, reception because issues. I, I don't can join. You cannot join. Okay, let me see if I can move you to another room, maybe. Let's see if that helps. Um, yeah, please. There you go. Vamos a ver ahora mover al tres. Vamos a ver otra vez. Por ahí está Carla, creo. I try. Okay, let's try it. There you go.
tell me if would I would earn money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can sell it. But yeah. I think it, because it's difficult to to find a, to find the, the owner of, of our, our, our ring, you know. You know yeah. what I mean? So I I oh. prefer I I will keep to myself. Okay. And put it now in your single piece. Yes. <laughs> the people say ring. Ooh, get get married. Yes, perhaps. Okay, the other one. If your friend wanted to marry someone you don't trust, uh, I will try to to give her or or, or him or his so my advice and about take care of the person who who is going to. Mary. Okay. In my case, I if I my friend wanted to marry somewhat she da doesn't have him. Maybe I tell I I will angry about it situation, but I tell I say I say her. Hi, Michael. The police. Okay. What would you do if you found a a diamond ring? Wow! <laughs> if I, if I, I, never, I never, I uh, never uh, found uh, things. <laughs> it's, it's funny. <laughs> okay, but no but money, no no jaggers. Uh, uh, I I I don't I don't. Uh, never ¿Cómo se dice su suerte? Money. ¿Cómo se dice suerte? Lucky. No, lucky. I don't. Lucky I don't lucky. Okay. Uh, if I found uh, the diamond rings, I um, I could um, uh, I could um, uh, what is it? What do I say here? Eh, to, eh, um, déjame contar la palabra. Lo lleva, llevaría. Dame esa palabra, llevaría. Uh, I, 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 I might take it. Yeah, llevaría. Okay, I will take. Uh -huh. I will take a, a jewelry store to a know your price mm -hmm. no it's it's price lo llevaría a la, a la joyería para para conocer su precio mm -hmm. para ver si es real <laughs> is real or no or, or no real <laughs> no diamond <laughs> ok so, <laughs> me, me gusta escucharlos eh, muy bien este, bueno, vamos a ver. Está interesante como lo dice Ana, me gusta. Lo llevaría a ver si es real o no. Está bien. Hay que ver primero y si vale algo. ¿no? Entonces, está bien como lo están haciendo. I could take it uh, to a jewelry store, maybe. I don't know. I, I probably would say it that way. Like, I would take it to a jewelry store uh, to find out uh, its price. Its price, ¿verdad? Okay, found, found. To find out, to find out. Recuerden de que también podemos decir como find out, es como averiguar. Okay. Averiguar cuál es el precio. Or to know uh, find out. what is okay. uh, its worth. También worth es otra palabra que podemos utilizar para hablar acerca del valor, ¿verdad? De algo. 
por ejemplo, pueden decir, eh, it's work. Se lo voy a pasar aquí en el chat, Ana, okay. para que okay. lo vea. It's, uh, uh, it's work. It's, Ahí está. Uh, okay. It's work. Eso significa su valor. Es como ah, okay. cuál, lo que vale. Es it's, it's uh, 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 más apropiado para, para cosas valiosas. It's uh -huh. work. Correcto. Ok. Ok. Y de... Eh, o pudiera julio, decir también, it's real value, por ejemplo. It's value. Real value, ok. El valor. I don't Hay know que... this, eh, eh, that eh, word. <laughs> it's called. Ok. Eh, julio. Julio. Hi, Julio. Hello. Hello. Uh, the last one. If your friend uh want wanted to to marry someone you didn't trust. I the third one. Okay. I, uh, I could, I couldn't, uh, I wouldn't, uh, 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 I, uh, teacher, aconsejar, conciliar. Bueno, cuando queremos decir que le queremos dar consejo a alguien, por lo, por lo general advice. decimos advice. ¿verdad? Advice. Okay. So I would give him some advice, maybe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, entonces sería, I, I, uh, might, uh, uh, I might advise Puede decir, I would advise okay. my friend. Don't marry. Don't not I, to I, marry. Not to marry that not person. Not to marry. Not to marry. <laughs> with, with the, the, with the boyfriend. <laughs> okay. Está bien. Está bien. Puede decirlo así. Eh, si es eh, así, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Si usted sabe que su amiga se va a casar con eh, su novio, entonces podrá decir así. So I would advise uh, her not to marry uh, or, or to not get married with, him, with, oh. with her boyfriend, uh -huh. por ejemplo. Pero para que sea más fácil, quizás yo le diría como, uh, I would advise my friend not to get married. No, not married. Okay. Not get to get married. Just like that. Okay. Es más okay, sencillo. Thank you. Sí, uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Bueno, you're welcome. Okay. Bueno, Thank you. You're welcome. Bueno, creo que es aquí nos vamos a quedar, guys, porque ya casi nos pasamos del tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces solamente les quería decir eso. Eh, voy a cerrar los cuartos estos que hacemos y pues solamente me voy a despedir de todo, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que vamos a hacer. Thank you, teacher. Okay. You're Thank welcome. you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bueno, ahí estamos. Well, <laughs> there we go. Hey, guys. So I just wanted to say goodbye. Thank you one more time for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time to be on uh, for the class. So I will see you tomorrow. We have just uh, two more classes. So hopefully I can see you back tomorrow. And I hope you guys enjoy your evening. So take care, guys. And I will see you tomorrow.
Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night, teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night, Julio. See you. Bye, guys. Bye.